This is Punk Rock and Politics, and today is April 25th, 2017, and this is episode number 20. Let's do this. These days are strange, it's true. I would bomb the shit out of them. If you think that punk rock doesn't mix with politics, you're wrong. Welcome to Punk Rock and Politics. Today we're talking to guitarist Steve Smith from the band Knights Like Thieves about the disappearance of the anti-war movement within the Democratic Party, the 2016 presidential election, and Bernie Sanders vs. the DNC. Then on Open Mic's Last Call, we'll talk about the French presidential election and how it interconnects to Trump and Brexit. So let's get to the political mosh bit, but first, here's the news of the week. Here's what's making news. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live fucking thing sucks that was a classic clip from bill o'reilly who was recently fired from fox news o'reilly's cable news show has been number one in the ratings for 15 consecutive years but after recent sexual harassment allegations followed by several advertisers pulling their ads news corp Fox News's parent company said that they will be letting Bill O'Reilly go. In journalism news, the United States prosecutors are getting ready to press charges against Julian Assange, founder of WikiLeaks, for releasing government secrets. The charges could be a small step for the government to slowly eliminate journalists' rights. We will have more on this story as it develops. Who should be rising? The party! Who should be rising? The party! Who should be rising? The party! That's some sounds from this Saturday where tens of thousands of scientists and activists took to the streets across the United States to protest Trump and to promote science on this year's Earth Day. In the first round of the French presidential election, Emmanuel Macron and Marie Le Pen are the two frontrunners and will have a final runoff election in two weeks. More on the French presidential election at the end of the program. On this day in rock history, April 25th, 2014, Spotify removed an album by an American funk band called Volpec from its streaming site. The album was 10 tracks of pure silence and it was the band's fourth record title, Sleepify. The band encouraged fans to stream it on repeat overnight in hopes of generating money so that the band could go on tour and not charge any admission fees. And if that isn't genius, I don't know what is. And that's the news of the week. Do it live! Fucking thing sucks! Over the past four months of producing the Punk Rock and Politics podcast, one thing that we haven't been short on is finding good bands. But I get especially excited when I discover a great band here in my hometown of San Diego. And today's episode is one of those occasions. Nights Like Thieves is a catchy, melodic, indie punk band out of San Diego, California. And Nights Like Thieves exploded on the scene with their first demo and quickly recorded and released a six song EP titled Light the Fuse and Run. This EP by Nights it's like Thieves is packed with solid riffs and super catchy melodies. Needless to say, I've been playing this album on repeat for the past week. I was lucky enough to meet up with guitarist Steve Smith from the band and he treated me some coffee as we talked about punk rock and politics. But before we get to the interview, let's hear one of their songs. Here's I Collide by Nights Like Thieves.
And that was I Collide by Nights Like Thieves. And I have Steve Smith here, uh, guitarist from... I have the ID to prove that that's my <laughs> yeah. name, <too>. Probably the most <laughs> generic name, I think, in America. You know, that's what happens when you're a Smith and then my... my Parents let my older brothers name me, and they named me after Steve Austin, the Six Million Dollar Man. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I ended up being a Steve Smith, and oddly Oops. enough, they didn't like Steve Austin Smith. It was just like Steve Smith. Like, okay, right, right. That's yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah, um, yeah, dude. So uh, you guys are a relatively new band. You formed October 2016, that so a few months. Yeah. So how's how's everything going for the? New growing pains? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, not really. I think uh, I think we're moving uh, along pretty quickly, which I think is good for us. I mean, like I said, um, like we discussed earlier, you know, Mario's got a lot of um, experience with like video and audio editing, mm-hmm. as yeah. well as I myself. I do some, I do home recordings and whatnot. So, uh, I mean, we've had we've been pretty self sufficient getting our our stuff done. You know, video the you know Mario doing the video and then me and him working on the uh, the recording together. Yeah, and it, it's been pretty. Uh, pretty painless. Yeah, the um, the video, the song that we just played, it, I Collide, has a music video, and it's like a '80s retro vibe, and it has yeah. a whole bunch of things. And it wasn't really intended to be like any movies from like the '80s or anything. Like I don't know how that even came to pass. Like probably just because we're old guys. You and know? those were I'm all of our ones. Yeah, yeah, we're all, you know, and we all just kind of picked what videos we wanted to be in, and and. So yeah, a, a good a good yeah. collection of eighties. There's a few nineties ones, yeah, yeah. but 90s. it had that like VHS. Oh like, yeah, no, he did that. Feel. Yeah, 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 he yeah. wanted to do that. That so. was cool. Yeah, that was pretty. Fun. Yeah, it was really <laughs> really a uh, good video. Um, well, thank you. So definitely, um, I'm sure Mario will appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Really hard on it. Yeah, definitely check it out um, on YouTube. We have like a playlist, so I'll definitely put that song on the playlist because that one's the you. most fun. Um, and for go, sure. yeah, we'll have all the links for everyone. So definitely should go check that out because it's a really really good song funny video so yeah Thank definitely you. fun um and you guys um so you're just starting to play like live you have a bar, uh, show coming up at the tower bar yeah yeah um, coming for, up uh, for law escalar fest um will castro uh, a good friend of ours we've known him for uh, well a couple of us in the band have known him for well over a decade um it's his, his label san diego label uh, La Escalera, and he's doing. He puts on a festival every year. This is a uh, year six, and yeah, so he just uh, uh, he books a bunch of bands, like a ton of bands at various venues throughout, like North Park, South Park, and all that. And then mm-hmm. there's shows down in TJ as well um, that he does, and it's just, so it's kind of like a Southern California slash oh, Tijuana yeah. festival. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely Southern California. Yeah, cool. he, is it all know, music or is, is it, it is it all types of music or mainly um, punk? Yeah, or? no, I mean it's I mean his label is is um, I wouldn't say punk orientated. Uh, like you know, indie, there's a lot of indie yeah. stuff on there, yeah. and that, that's the label we're talking about. The label you guys are signed yeah, onto, and to, yeah. well, what's it's it, uh, Law Escalera. Oh, okay, and that's okay. That's um, the name of the label. Very, very Hispanic, right? <laughs> hey, well, we're in San Diego. Yeah, um, yeah. I, did, I don't think we didn't mention we're here uh, sipping some coffee. Yes, uh, at, doing it, doing it live uh, here. That's right. So yeah, we are not sponsored by Denny's. Yeah, <laughs> just delicious coffee. That's yeah, right. um, and yeah, it's it's uh, fun to be here in person, getting yeah. the band, and we'll definitely. I'm gonna have to try to go check out a show, get some live yeah, uh, recording. Yeah, it's, it's and stuff. definitely an interesting experience for for even us as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I think uh, this will be our third show coming up, mm-hmm. um, and we've got like three shows next month. So we, we took on a lot uh, for, for April on our plate, uh, but not complaining because it's always good to be out there doing, yeah, doing it. Yeah, it's always good That's to play. That's what we're doing this for, you know. Right, yeah, yeah. You got to play uh, live as much as you can. Oh, yeah. Um, you were saying one thing, the show, it's going to be at the Tower Bar. Mm-hmm. One thing about the Tower Bar, they film a video. They have like a video playing. Yeah, you had they, a really funny story about a previous well, game you were in. Yeah, previous project I was in when we were playing, um, they had a porn Softcore mostly uh, behind us, and it was very distracting. But definitely 18 plus. Oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> um, it was very distracting. Um, we, we, you know, that project played terrible without distractions, mm. so we didn't really need that distraction. But it, it was a, it was an interesting night for sure. Right, right. So, <laughs> have all you guys been um, in previous bands here in San Diego, and how did you guys really get together? Well. It's it's an interesting mixture. Uh, I've been playing in San Diego for about twenty one years now, mm. in a slew of projects. Will's even 
you know, sponsored some of them way back in the day. But Frankie, our bass player, he's somebody who I've known the longest in the band. Uh, I've been playing in bands with him for well over 10 years now. Oh, okay. Uh, I met him, oddly enough, he was he used to work at Guitar Center. So oh, right, I used to right. see him when I'd go in there buying chords and being cheap. <laughs> and, then, yeah, and you know, get some discounts once get, you get, get some discounts, yeah. hook up with him, right? right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, nice. back when they could hook it up before freaking, you know. Yeah, it's like super back corporate back. now, I heard. Yeah, well, Guitar I mean, Center. you know, once uh, fucking They're Romney. They're anti-union. Like, yeah, now, once Romney, mm-hmm. his, you know, Bain Capital took it over and, and whatnot, they, they, their whole oh, business plan. It was Bain that yeah, took Bain Guitar Capital. No yeah. way. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was, and this had to happen only goodness. like five Maybe ten years ago. Yeah, right? this has happened within the last ten years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spe- I can't remember specifically, but no, you know, I, it was when R- Romney was uh-huh. shortly after him and Obama were squaring. Yeah, because there is a lot of local guitar places, and then um, when I just moved back here to San Diego, Guitar Trader over in Claremont mm-hmm. here in San yeah. Diego, they closed a lot Did of the. Really? Yeah, yeah, they're right. closed, and they were there forever. Yeah, I used um, to buy stuff there, so I had to go to Guitar Center, and I hated it. And it was so it was even worse than when it was yeah. way back in the day. Yeah, so I was no, like, it's, "That's it's, what happened." Wow, it's pretty terrible. Yeah, Jeez. but Sam Ash actually just opened up a store out here, out in uh, the Spring Valley area, College oh. Grove area. Okay, I mean. I'm not sure if it's a, an amazing alternative to Guitar mm-hmm. Center. It's another corporate, you know, ginorm- ginormous yeah. corporate, you know, out, off the East Coast. Um, they got some cool people working there, though. I've been there a few times and bought I've bought some stuff there. Um, they got some cool people working there. That right. Helped us out and yeah. with stuff. So. Well, at this point, almost anything is better than a Guitar Center, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, they're I almost wanna, like the Walmart. I don't want to shit on them too much. Yeah. I don't want. I don't want you to get in trouble. This is all yeah, me saying. It. I don't. Steve. Steve Smith has has <laughs> in Nights <laughs> Like Thieves. They have mm-hmm. nothing wrong with Guitar Center. <laughs> well, I mean, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I mean, we we definitely have our qualms for sure. Yeah, but um, we yeah, it's all me. It's all me. Um. <laughs> all right. Well, hey, let's let's play one more song and then we'll come back uh, and talk about some punk rock and politics so what are we going to hear now oh god what's this one this one's come back home mm. uh, then the other video this is the other video out. that we have yeah. so this is uh come back home by oh wait no wait come back home that's that's the ending song Oh, uh, we're, we're gonna do gold bugs. Ah, uh, okay. Sorry, my my apologies. No worries, no worries. So this is uh, the one that has the video, though, right? No, no, no. C- Come back home has the other oh, video. Gold okay. bugs is just one of the songs off our record. Ah, uh, this is um, okay. Cool. Yeah, one of the good. Well, I mean, six songs. Well, EPs, they're so. all they're, <laughs> they're all good, good right? but you know, one one of the better good ones. <laughs> so gold bugs. Yes. Here, so here's gold bugs by Nightlife Thieves.
And that yeah. was Gold Bugs by Night Like Thieves. And I still that, that would be Nights Like Thieves. Nights like Night, Nights like Thieves. That's I Plural. Nights. And not like K N. Not, not yes, like K N. Like N. Like, yeah, like the Nights. Night, like it's nights, kinda yeah. it's kinda like a play on It's a play little play on words. On words. Little. It's not very clever. Mm-hmm. We think it is, of course, but yeah. um, when you actually look down you say oh, that's not very clever. It's clever. It's not <laughs> Beatles clever. But right, it's clever. Right. <laughs> but who who the hell could be Beatles right. clever, well, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. Some, some big shoes to fill right there. Right, I know, but hey, uh, we all have someone to look up to, you know. Course, so, <laughs> so yeah, we have Steve Smith still here with us, and now we're getting into I need the a stage name. You, I, yeah, I really, cut, cut, people <laughs> should really stop calling me by my actual name. You know, you, have you seen American Dad? Yeah, well, you know, I, yeah. Mean, I, have, I mean, <laughs> I've never been a huge like Seth MacFarlane TV mm-hmm, show. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. I don't like his stuff, but I think he's a funny guy, and I think that he's. A, a smart guy and stuff like that, but I've never been a big fan of like Family Guy and all that stuff because it's a little too lowbrow for me. Yeah, and I, I know that makes me sound like maybe elitist or in no, some way no, or something no. like that. I'm but, the same way. Like his, it's just you know those those shows are just like we're going to throw out a hundred jokes and yes. ten of them are going to be funny and and none of them pertain to the plot line whatsoever yeah, no, they're no. just goalie they just, that's yeah, why i love south schizo- park schizo- yeah. south park builds they'll build oh, yeah. a whole episode just, just to do one joke even exactly. if the joke's stupid you still have the, you know they'll <laughs> right. do a horrible dumb joke but you at least you're like well they worked really hard to build right. up to that joke right and that, that i think that shows more like um talent and you know it yeah kinda, it, it brings people in and they're also super political which those guys are like super smart yeah they, they yeah they're i mean which this through this last uh, election. I don't know if you caught any of their uh, with the 2016 election. I know if you looked. caught any of their newer. Well, I season. haven't seen any South Park in years. Which, mm. uh, you have to go back and watch the last two seasons in your free time because okay. they're super political and right. super relevant. Well, those guys are like libertarians, right? If I'm not mistaken, I, at least I don't one even of them think is. they're. I think they're kind of libertarians, but right. then they eat, but then they'll also like point out how libertarianism is right. is failed and yeah no i mean so it's, it's like they almost shit on everything yeah i mean i don't think anything is off the table i mean yeah. as far as as that stuff mm-hmm. yeah um, for those guys i mean they're, they're just they'll, they'll put it all on the table they'll make fun of themselves all day long you know yeah yeah which i find awesome yeah yeah and they uh so you watch the older ones because they brought yeah, back I the mean, douche and turd sandwich See, I don't even know what that is. Oh, like, okay. I I started watching literally from season one, like f- first mm-hmm. episode, and I probably watched probably through season five, and then I started becoming more active in bands, so I stopped watching yeah. TV as yeah. much. So I mean, I, I even took a three year stint where I played World of Warcraft. Which, <laughs> you know, I, I apologize yeah. um, for people. Um, nice. I don't even know why. But yeah. yeah, the world yeah. they had the see South Park. They have they a, a and they have Warcraft a world of Epic, episode, which is yes. it's a two part. It's I really saw that good. One, yeah, yeah, that, it's that really was good. pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm the same way. I stopped watching, but then I got back into it uh, about two or three seasons ago because right. it got super political and really relevant to oh, yeah, today's I mean, stuff. You know, so when you got a, an election coming up. I mean, when you yeah. can keep up like with your. Uh, your animation and stuff like mm-hmm. that when you keep up with the times. I mean, that's and I they think, write and record a whole episode in a week. Yeah, Every, it's, it's like because well, they had that special de- so- software developed so that they can freaking animate it like super quick because mm-hmm. the animation isn't traditional. You know, obviously, you know, cartoon hand drawn or anything like that. It's mm-hmm. it's all computer based now for them. So yeah. uh, it's I think it's a little easier for them to get things out quicker and and be more relevant. Yeah, what's exactly. Going on. Yeah, so. Let's get to uh, like the 2016 election. I see you have your Bernie yes. shirt on, yes, um, and we know because nobody's tired of that yeah. election <laughs> at all. Well, I still have my Bernie sticker on my oh, car yeah. and oh, everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, what what do you make of of that? Do you think Bernie even had a chance at all? Well, I mean, I it's it's weird because I'll get in arguments with some of my old old friends about this who 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 are like. They weren't necessarily Bernie supporters, but they weren't necessarily against him or anything like that. I, I have a, you know, but uh, did Bernie have a chance? I mean, that's, I believe that's obvious. I mean, you know, everybody, well, at least as far as corporate Democrats and, and the people who are within that establishment bubble and whatnot, they, you know, they'll swear up and down, you know, they're, they're just so far removed from mm-hmm. reality, it seems. Like yeah. it's, it's insanity, you know, yeah. but I mean, you know, you look, I mean, the data is there. It's, yeah. imper- it's there in front of their face. I mean, Bernie Sanders on average, double digits ahead of Trump mm-hmm. in a general election. 
Mm-hmm. That never dropped. Well, especially with the states that mattered, Wisconsin well, yeah. Well, yeah, um, and, mm-hmm. and mainly Michigan, because he, well, yeah. he blew Hillary out in Michigan. Yeah, and, he, he squeaked by on that one for sure, but yeah. um, he... Well, know, no, okay, I should rephrase that. Oh, no, he I, blew I think out... Massachusetts, my, my, my no, it was Michigan. I think he won. It was like it was, it was was like 60%. It was pretty high, yeah, but they no. were saying that he was going to lose it, and so according to expectations, he yeah. blew it out. So Michigan, mm-hmm. and I don't know if he won Pennsylvania or not, but I know Wisconsin and Michigan. He yeah, won those no. two states. I mean, he would have took Pennsylvania I, I and mean, the president. You got to look at it. <laughs> you know, we can sit here and talk about the DNC and and how they they tip the scales against him. You mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. that's obvious. I mean, we have again data for that. I mean, I know that they want to ignore the substance of the emails. Mm-hmm. You know, the DNC hacks and all that. Yeah. They want to do the Russian Blame thing. The you know, yeah. that's all nonsense. I mean, that's. That's their bubble, and that's all fine and dandy. I mean, I have a friend back from high school. He moved to North Carolina a long time ago, and he, you know, I'll throw up something that's critical of the the DNC or whatever, mm-hmm. and he will be right there with like a a ten page article just going at me. But he's he's really, but his attacks are personal. They're not based on anything trying to defend what I'm the claim I'm making, which I'm not even like aggressive about it. I'm just like, Hey, they murders oh, other yeah, no, dictators and yep. they, and then it's they're, also, they, they murder, they take out uh, democratically elected yeah, governments. Yeah. I mean, uh-huh, it's not even yeah. dictators, it's not swapping dictators for dictators. They're swapping for democracy. Well, for that, dictators. I mean, look at like, that. Iran is like the mm-hmm. perfect uh, exactly. exa- example. We took out a democratically elected leader, mm-hmm. put in our own puppet government. And then mm-hmm. after that failed, it went more extreme, just yeah. like Iraq. It's yeah. like all constantly happens, but we keep trying it over and over. It's insanity. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's again, I don't, it's hard for me to make any kind of conclusions as to what might actually be going through the mind of some of these people who are in charge, you know, whether they're really just that far removed for it from reality or they have information that's just so far removed from the public eye mm-hmm. that they're making these, they're calling these shots with. I mean, it's, you know, yeah. I don't want to get into like conspiracy theory territory. I don't want to this, you know, the whole mm-hmm. well, shadow government. I mean, like we, we all yeah. have a kind of an idea of what that may be and what's yeah. going on with it and, and whatnot. But you know, I, it, it gets a little too far into speculation mm-hmm. um, and, again, con- conspiracy theory. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. The, but, and I'm not necessarily anti-conspiracy theory. I think there, you know, there's just some things that are just remain to be proven, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's been plenty of things that oh, were yeah. conspiracy theories later been proven. You yeah. know, like uh, the Tuskegee experiments, mm-hmm. um, Gulf of Tonkin. Right. But – we could let's talk let's let's dial it back not talk about so much like uh things that conspiratorial you know Mm -hmm. per se let's go back to like the the dnc Mm -hmm. and now like you said they kind of been corporatized so now there's Mm -hmm. almost no anti-war party like you're saying they're beating the they're exactly they're beating the drums of war and it's like there's no anti-war party whatsoever no, now. Uh, so that's why I officially left and went green because I don't know what yeah, else to do. Yeah, I mean, I I I voted for Jill Stein in the general. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, me too. Because we're in California, so right, right, who right. cares? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't, you know, it, it's it's a difficult thing because, you know, they, they have a disadvantage, the Green Party, because of the... the, the yeah duopoly in our in our uh politics so um it's oh yeah, we got a coffee break going on here i'll take a little you bit want more. Another one? yeah because what are you guys doing you don't mind? oh, oh we're, we're just are filming he's in a band what's up what's, yeah, what's up? up coffee guy yeah I'll what's take a little. caesar that's me caesar. this is caesar come caesar. down thank you caesar. to santee denny's and say hi to caesar Speedy Gonzalez is his nickname. See, he's he's got a nickname that's better than anything I'll ever have, you know. So, refilling our coffee. Thank you, Caesar. Thanks, Caesar. Dude, keeping us going with more coffee. <laughs> right. See, there you go. Well, now we're gonna be up all night with. This I stuff. know, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what um that's what I told Steve here. I was like, yeah, we're gonna talk Bernie and DNC. I guess I'll, I'll set up the Facebook Live. Um, cause we'll probably go over, uh, the podcast. So there'll be bonus. So bonus material. <clears throat> yeah. Folks. Yeah. So if you're on, um, you hearing this on the podcast codes or anything yeah. like that, it's just bonus. Material. You go, you go to the Facebook page <laughs> and you could watch the video and then there'll be links to the band. You could check out the band and wow. check out their damn video. It's funny. It is hilarious. <laughs> it is very hilarious. Yeah. All right. Back, back to the, um, the thing. So I, that's the, that's the whole part that 
blows my mind is there's no anti-war party and the Maybe even the crazier thing is no one even gives a shit in America. No one even knows we're at war. We've been well, at war for yeah, 17 I mean, years. Yeah, and we've got currently, what, seven that we know about yeah, yeah. Um, going on right now. All yeah. in, mostly in the Middle East. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, I think one in mm -hmm. Africa or something like that. Um, yeah, uh, Somalia. Somalia, we're bombing. yeah. Yeah, and they're in Africa, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it is, it is kind of alarming, you know, how manipulative – the media has been with this. I mean, you know, we're, mm -hmm. we're you know, and it, I guess it's frightening how, how quickly people eat this stuff up, you know, it's like yeah. you and I, we, I mean, I don't know how much corporate media you watch. I mean, yeah. I watch zero. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't watch a whole lot of TV to begin with, you know, mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I go get all my stuff off of YouTube and I, I've, you know, I spent years trying to figure out who was reliable, who was a yeah. source, you know, yeah. it, with all that stuff. So, you know, I, I have my, my go-to people and, you know, there's go to people on the right and whatnot, you know, so Yeah, you um, definitely have to listen to both sides. And I yeah. do I, I um I listen to corporate media, uh, like CNN, MSNBC, sometimes Fox News, basically <laughs> Only to uh, hear what they're like, what yeah. they're giving the people, because I, because right, right. I want to know kind of what are what are they telling the people, so what are they going to go with? And pretty much right. every time I turn it on, I, it's kind of like I do sample testing. You know, okay. in the morning I'll turn right. it on and then okay. switch it, or at night, afternoon. Ninety percent of the time they're talking about Russia or Trump's connection to Russia. Right, right. I mean, that's the thing right now. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's a, that's you know, again, like you said, an there's no anti-war thing, mm -hmm. and. I mean, let's face it, and we know why. It's because war is profitable. It's probably the most profitable industry on fucking the planet, of the, the face of the planet right yeah, now. I mean, yeah. it's it's just insanely profitable. I mean, you know, Walmart's got nothing on war. No, I think that's um, a war in the financial industry or like yeah. just selling like junk bonds yeah. oh, and yeah. stuff. That and war are like the only thing our, uh, our company or our country yeah. <laughs> uh, really produces. You know, and it's crazy to see see it unfold from i guess my my own perspective because I, i'm not i'm not somebody who's followed politics my whole life mm -hmm. uh, it's been fairly recently within the last four years or so oh wow um yeah it's it's not again i'm not super you know i get i go to my places and get my stuff you mm -hmm. know but yeah um but i have you know ever since i was um uh, legal to vote i have registered i was registered as a democrat and mm -hmm. i'd always voted along party lines and all that stuff yeah you know? yeah because I mean, you know before the internet we didn't really yep. have the information yeah it mm -hmm. wasn't available to us exactly and i'm actually surprised that there's still so many people getting their information from the corporate media like like what drives them to that you know like it's just familiar i think and like and it's the older generation well yeah know, there's the a lot of the old, plus, yeah oh, yeah for for sure the millennials they're all not. doing it and then the baby boomers mm -hmm. i think they're kind of mixed but i think the baby boomers like the reading the newspaper and they really like right. i mean it's, especially with the corporate media wall uh wall street journal or not wall street journal it's the uh washington post oh, those guys. they got bought out by jeff bezos and oh, he's shit. basically just funneling all yeah. this money into it and using it because it, it was losing a bunch of money right. and you know and then trump goes oh washington failing washington post fake news whatever it's <laughs> right. like okay you know it's not fake news but it is it does have an agenda and oh, it's yeah. like spin and it, it's crazy to think and no one even like analyzes whoa why did jeff bezos buy this company and it's losing money and he's pumping all this money into it well because right. media influences people. right yeah exactly you're, you're exactly right on that and that seems so for me it seems so obvious and like again i can't it's it's hard to wrap my mind around it. it's like it doesn't take like a whole lot of logical steps to get to the to get to Oh, the media is owned by, owned by the corporation mm -hmm. and they have, you know, they want to keep their money funneling to them. So they're going to buy the government. It's only a two step process. I mean, you know, they pay for the government. I mean, you know, with the I mean, like with the the whole Debbie Wasserman Schultz thing where yeah. she was calling up. It was the MS, uh, the Morning Joe, yeah. you know, and saying, hey, you guys Mika. are yeah, Mika yeah. Brzezinski and Joe Scarbo, or, yeah. you know, and she's like, hey, you guys need to be nicer to us. I'm going to talk to your boss and this and that. You know, it's like uh -huh. it's not a, a lot of mental gymnastics you have to do to get to that. Like, yeah. It's pretty fairly obvious. I don't I don't count myself amongst the smartest people in the world for sure. You know, and I have a. A high school education. I went to a little college, 
Um, but high school is, you know, the last uh, that I uh, I finished, and it just seems so simple to me. I just don't understand how people can't make these connections. Yeah. I think it's just the critical thinking, you know, and that well, yeah. that's kind of like something they don't even teach in school. So that's kind of something yeah. that people just get. True, you know, true. so you just might be a, just a natural critical thinker. And then once you got into politics, right. it kind of opened you up because yeah. I've been watching politics since 2001. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, There's really. 9-11 is right. what I was Not, like, right. well, you know, and um, well, that's and kind I, of what t- turned my eye yeah. to politics as well. But I was still pretty naive about it. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, I was always like, oh, the conspiracy theories. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was an inside job and this and that, you know, but. Yeah, but even the official story is nuts. And then, oh, yeah. you know, going into Iraq, you know, <laughs> under false pretenses. And then basically that created ISIS. And then right. Obama got in there and didn't roll back anything Bush did. He right. just extended it. So exactly. it's kind of like, right. yeah. So that's why I've been watching this shit show just unfold for, yeah. you know, 17, 16, 17 years yeah. now. And, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I, I've seen, and now I kind of watched, um, people are really getting awake is basically what I'm saying, you know, and they, like they you really said, four are. years. Yeah. And, and you know, that, and that's where Bernie Sanders mm, can mm-hmm. be credited. Like go, he yeah. was the one because he wasn't, you know, when they were doing the primaries and stuff like that, I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't attacking Hillary Clinton, you know, like in the traditional sense that politicians usually attack each other in order to get their party's nomination or whatever. He was just, he would point out facts. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. then people would go, Oh, that's a fact. That can be proven. Here's the proof. And, right. And here, you know, whatnot, you know. And they're like, oh, my God, why are you being so mean to Hillary? You need yeah. to tone it down. This the, the Bernie bro narrative and all <laughs> oh, that stuff. You're yeah. just like, really? Yeah. I mean, like, who falls for this stuff? And it's amazing, too, because, like, my, my buddy who I was telling you about lives in North mm-hmm. Carolina. Now, we went to high school together out here in California. Mm-hmm. And he was more like me back in high school. He was very rebellious towards the institutions and yeah. the political and, and, and all that stuff. And now, you know, again, like I said, I, I post something that's slightly critical of the DNC or, you know, whatever's going on right now with them. And he, I get a fucking, you know, yeah. three paragraph response from him just constantly attacking my character. Not even anything on the issue of what I was talking about. It's just like, oh, you're so dumb. You don't know this. I mean, like, OK, you know, yeah. so it's, it's weird because he went the opposite direction Mm -hmm. from what I did. Cause back in high school, I was more like, Oh, Hey, I'm going to vote up against uh, long party lines because that's what I know. And you know, I'm, I'm naive about it. You know, I don't have the information. Yeah. You know, this is back in the nineties when the internet didn't really have that much information on it. Mm. Yeah. I, I think everyone was voting party lines forever, you know, I mean, you know, pretty much forever. And, and now people are so, they're so boxed in. Um, I mean, but not like recently, like you said, and that's being the DNC screwing over Bernie woke up a bunch of the progressives a few years ago. It was really Occupy. What I've noticed, I think Occupy Occupy really woke people up. And the craziest thing is when the Tea Party first, first started, Mm -hmm. it was all, about taxes and bailing out the the the, the Wall, Wall Street, Street bailout. Right, that was right, what it was all about. And I was like, oh wow, yeah. the right is pissed off about Wall Street being bailout, and the yeah. left is starting to get. Wow, this yeah. could be a movement. Yeah. And then the I and then I remember I went to uh, two um, Tea Party movements, and okay. the first one they were just talking about taxes and shit, and then the second one they're talking about how something about like states' rights and how if states want to repeal the civil uh, civil acts. Right. Amendment. That's you know they right. should, and I was like, whoa, you know yeah. what what happened? It, they they got co opted, right? And I think people really the left the well, they were Occupy, funded by the Koch brothers, right? No, or, at, at, or, it, they were astroturf at first. Really? It, okay. It, the the Tea Party was a completely organic uh, movement by the right. However, right. it was it was, was co opted by the Koch brothers mm. and the 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 rich um, like. Uh, Heritage Foundation, right. the far right wing, um, yeah, which gave us our Obamacare, by the way. Yeah, folks. yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, there you go. Yeah, so um, it was really interesting though how they got co opted, and then the yeah. left they got just shut down, and then the the DNC didn't want to listen to them, and they've right. been losing ever since basically 2010. It's th- that's yeah. the most ridiculous thing ever. I mean, that's that's what I think is also mind blowing is how how much loss they've suffered since then, yeah. since Obama took office. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's an insane, I mean, they've lost every level of government. Yeah. Yeah. In States every election too. And federal, you know, it's, it's, it's insanity. And they and still like, put in Perez. What do you, how do you feel about Tom Perez? Like, you know, when Keith Ellison 
who again, I don't really think Keith Ellison yeah, is that progressive. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> he's got a couple of ideas that are slightly progressive, but I mean, th- you know, but I mean, he got a lot of support because Bernie backed him because again, Keith Ellison backed Bernie during the primaries. Exactly. I'm not even sure what that was really about. I don't know why Keith Ellison, because he's really not that progressive. Again, yeah. I think it was just kind of a Bernie is a pragmatist. At the end of the day, it, it, you know, yes, and no, and it's weird because his whole his whole message was now's not the time yep, to be pragmatic. Yep. Yeah, and then he. But goes then you and became pragmatic. Like, I know. Like I love Bernie, but there's some yeah. things that are a bit confusing, yep. and I know he wants to like play within the confines of the rules mm-hmm. and and whatnot and and how it works. But I mean, he has you to know, realize he had that the didn't movement. work. Uh, yeah, exactly. It didn't he work. Had, he had the momentum. Yep. The DNC couldn't have stopped. Could not have stopped him. The, uh, the Republicans couldn't stop. That obviously couldn't stop him. I mean, shit. There's probably more Republicans that vote for Bernie than Republicans now. Yeah, yeah. I, I think if if it was Bernie versus Trump, I think if nothing else, um, if nothing else, it would have had two clear paths on which direction America wants to go. Right. Be, no. Yeah. It would be exactly. totally clear. It would be. Yeah. Exactly. It'd be it would have been day. like 1930s. Yeah. Like you know, like who's yeah. what side you're. You know. Otherwise, on a like, oh, we have an anti-establishment uh, vibe, yeah. and let's put up a 100% establishment candidate against yeah. some crazy... Yeah, <laughs> like, against some nut job who won. Pretends that's, to be an yeah, establishment exactly. who's I mean, totally with like, the establishment. Like, how could you possibly think that Donald Trump was going to be anti-establishment? How? How? That I mean, yeah. the logic is mind-boggling. I, mean, I was thinking maybe he would be so narcissistic and so self-serving that he would be anti-establishment, but even that's not good. Yeah, but, I mean, I mean it's you know. not the uh, it's not a good way to get to no. where you know no. what you want. I mean, uh... but the thing with Trump that I am happy is people oh. people are out on the streets and they're protesting. They are, and that's what matters because they wouldn't be but, doing that if Hillary was president. right No, now. no. Well, yeah, they certainly wouldn't be doing that. But I, 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 the problem, I the only thing I see about that is those are like they're out there protesting. Like, there's probably more Republicans protesting progressive ideas. Or for progressive ideas, and I'd say Democrats. Democrats are all just like, okay, we got the women's march. That's yeah. fine. I'm all for that. I mean, I'm not anti-woman yeah. or anything like that. You know, I'm not. Uh, you know, I no. would self-describe as a feminist to some degree. Yeah. But you know, it, it that was those are still establishment mm-hmm. ideas mm-hmm. that they were protesting. It's like, oh, you know, Donald Trump, he's a bad person because he said I grab pussies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. we gotta have a women's march. Yeah. Man, man, man. You know, like they were out yep. there. Doing the whole anti-Trump thing, yes, exactly. Which is the mm-hmm. thing that, like, that's what lost them yeah. the election in the first place. They weren't keep... marching for yeah. progressive ideas; yeah, they, they were marching, marching against, against Trump. Trump. Exactly. exactly. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's good to some degree, but not in a progressive direction. I mean, it's it's not it has nothing to do with progressive ideas. It's just we're against Trump. Yep, and that's that's a losing strategy, yeah. and that's the strategy that they're continuing with. Continuing, I know. It's it's hey, we're not Trump. Okay, well, did that work out for you? Or, like, did that? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> have you before uh, we're we're going um, a little over? Let's sure. uh, wrap it up here in a, a minute, but sure. or a few in a few minutes. I have yeah, a, no worries. I have a good question. Um, sure. I've noticed that they've been carding Hillary out here a lot, a lot. Right. Like just within the last three days, she's had two appearances, mm-hmm. and it's all over the news. And mm-hmm. so it, I, I swear the liberals are like, "Oh, if we impeach Trump, Hillary will become president." I swear it's like, "Well, that's not how the Constitution works." No, I mean, no, Pence no, no, will no, become sure. president. I don't know, <laughs> but see, that's the thing. I don't. Uh, I mean, the Democrats don't even seem to know the rules of the game, anyways. It's like <laughs> they keep telling. Yeah. Ta- Hillary got the popular, popular vote. Well, that yeah, and yeah, yeah like that's not that's yeah. not the rules of the game. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, in a football game, the person wins yeah. with the most points, not with the most yards like, well, rushed. We got or, the most you know. field goals. So. Yeah, we got exactly. We got the most field goals, but yeah. you had the fewer points, so that doesn't matter. Exactly. Like, so I mean, so what do you think's up with the Hillary, like the media? Because well, we know that the DNC is colluding with the media essentially. Right. So why is the media? And Hillary out so much right now. What's up with that? In well, your opinion? here's my theory. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's been theorized or it's been looked at. Chelsea might be running for oh, God, a yeah. position in the government. Mayor. Of, mayor I of think. New York. Right? Or Congress or, or something. something. Yeah. I, think oh, I think it's mayor. I think oh. she's going to start there. Yeah. And then oh, probably go into Congress. Yeah. So Chelsea, like my theory is that Chelsea, she's going to try to build Chelsea up for this to get her into politics. Because let's face it, when Hillary lost, mm-hmm. the Clinton Foundation went 
sunk. Yeah, lost all its money. All their speaking. So things, that's yeah. that's where that's where all Hillary and Bill's fucking. That's where their money was coming mm-hmm, from. It's not coming mm-hmm. from the DNC. I mean, a good portion of it yeah. coming from Wall Street and all that stuff. But the Clinton Foundation was a slush fund for them. I mean, yeah. it was just play money for them. So you know, once she lost and she had no, she had nothing to offer all these governments. Well, mm-hmm. they start, they drew withdrew all their money. Exactly. So my guess is they're trying to build Chelsea into it so they can build the Clinton Foundation back up. Right. So that these foreign governments can continue to have some kind of influence over American policy. And I think that's the most hilarious thing when they say, well, tr-, you know, Putin wants to, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. influence our politics. Yeah, really? Yeah. Uh, if he wanted to do that, he would have just donated to the Clinton Foundation. Like, mm-hmm, he's mm-hmm. not, I mean... Yeah, I mean, that's that's a well, and that's why I'm totally fine with like we were talking about we were talking about Rachel Maddow earlier. I'm totally fine with Rachel Maddow going on 20 minute, 30 minute tirades about uh, Trump and um, the Russians, but then you should also do a 30 minute tirade about Hillary and the Saudis. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that would be and then if you both that, sides of the story, yeah, so then I'm speak. totally yeah. okay with them wasting all this time on the uh, this whole Russia thing. Um, yeah, actually, this- with with uh, the DNC, Hillary after the 2000. Eight uh, primary election when she lost to Obama, she was like a million, a few million dollars in debt because right. they spent their own money, right. Right. Uh, Hillary and Bill. So they were trying to get Obama basically to hand over his donor list to try to tap them for money to help right. bail her out in um, to get Bill Clinton's support, basically. Right. So that's when I think she was selected to be, oh, well, when Obama's done, yeah. we'll give it to you. Yeah. Um, it's possible. I mean, that's, I mean, you know, she, she made the bargain for the secretary of state position, which again, gave her a power to get this money from, you know, funneled into this Clinton foundation. Mm-hmm. I, I think the Clinton foundation is their biggest pile of money. I mean, I know that, you know, yeah. I mean, you got the Hillary victory fund, uh, fund that was like funneling money, funny money into yeah. her thing. And that was and with correct the record. Correct I the record. Yeah. yeah those uh. jag up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I know, I and then talk about myself. paid. Talk about paid. That everyone's like, "Oh, <laughs> Russia had paid bots," and I was like, right. "Well, who the fuck were the correct the record yeah, well, people?" Correct the there's record. <laughs> actual die. That's not even yeah. conspiracy. That was actual proof that there's correct the record people going trolling people mm-hmm. on on social media for Hillary. Yeah. but that's no big deal. But oh, right. Russia had some paid bots right, for right. Trump. Yeah, I mean, it's it's completely just ridiculous and. Mm-hmm. And again, I don't understand why logic is removed from that. Yeah. Uh, it's become like politics has become a team sport. Yeah. It's like, yeah. And, you know, I don't know. I just don't, I don't get that whole, that yeah. whole concept. I mean, it's, it really doesn't work like that. You want to, if you truly want a democracy, you would have more parties. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Because you would have more options to choose from. Exactly. Um, we've effectively been. An oligarchy since the seventies, I believe, maybe even late longer, maybe since the sixties, you know. Yeah. But I mean, much. starting with Nixon throwing all his yeah. all his buddies into the Supreme Court, mm-hmm. getting the money into politics and all that stuff. And then I mean, Reaganomics. It's just been a, yeah, it's just yeah. Yeah, Reaganomics. Jesus Christ, what yep. the hell was that? Like, how did we buy into that one? Like, <laughs> well, you know, the trickle down thing. So trickle down. I mean, that, again, <laughs> if you just look at it logistic, you know, with <laughs> logic, you just like no, that doesn't work. I know. I, I mean, know. again, I'm not a smart person. I don't trade on Wall Street or anything like that. But you, if you know anything about the velocity of money and stuff like that, you know that when rich people get more money, they fucking stash it in their offshore tax havens and hold on to it. When people like me and you get yeah. money, we fucking throw Go it back at Guitar Center, Walmart, yep. fucking Denny's. You know, we're we're spending the money, so the money goes yeah. back into the economy. And it fuels the economy. Yeah. Exactly. So I mean, this this that you know again. I'm not a smart guy, people. I'm just an average Joe. Right. Average Steve. <laughs> average um, Steve. Yeah. Well, let's wrap up, wrap yeah. the podcast up. Yeah, thanks for uh, coming on oh, here. Yeah, uh, sure. We have Steve Smith from <laughs> Knights Like Thieves. And American Dad. <laughs> and American Dad. Yeah, you got to say hi to Roger, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, yeah. Right. Oh, let's see. That's who you should have. You guys should have did a little clip I on know, that right? video. But um, Yeah, yeah it's harder to put us into like, cartoons and stuff like that. Right, than, right. Than yeah, that's true. You'd have to do some sort of animation effect. Mm. Um, so what, we're going to hear the last song. This one's going out. Come back home. And this has the come back home. This, this has is the, video. the other, vi- cool. other video. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, uh, thanks for coming on Punk Rock and Politics. Yeah. And this is Come Back Home by Knights Like Thieves.
All right, let's give it up for Nights Like Thieves and Steve Smith. <laughs> that was a really uh, fun interview. Whenever I get to talk to anyone about Bernie and, you know, that whole 2016 election debacle, I always, it's always really fun. And so now that brings us right into um, Open Mic's last call. Welcome. Thank you for sticking around the podcast this long to get it to this far <laughs> at the end. But actually, this is um, pretty interesting. Speaking of the 2016 American election, we're going to kind of talk really quick about the France um, election. It's like the runoff election. So that was held on uh, on Sunday, just a few days ago. And it was like, uh, I, I don't know, like 20 people <laughs> or so ran. And, um, and it's interesting how France has their presidential election, because first they hold it um, and they have a bunch of people who run they open up the field and they allow um, a lot of people to be able to run. So in the debates, there's 12 uh, people on debate or so on the debate stage. So you really have a diverse group um, of ideas and everything. But then things like this can happen, <laughs> which we have uh, we got the results. And it was uh, Emmanuel Macron. Yeah, right now it's a 20, 23.9, basically 24%. And then you have uh, Marie Le Pen at um basically 21 and a half 21.4 percent and then you have the uh like centrist um left candidate uh feel or feel on or no he's the um he's the republican party feel on and then you have the um the far far left um mel Chion, and those were the um other two but basically it's going to uh, macron and uh, marie le pen so marie le pen she is the uh, national front candidate kind of the far fringe right and a lot of people say she's the female Female Donald Trump because she wants to um, get France out of NATO. She wants to get out of the EU, um, and she's very, very uh, strict with um, immigrants. And she also she was like, after that Paris after the attack in Paris the other day, uh, she was saying how she wants to ban Islam or something. So she's she's pretty far far to the right, but she's also a um, a nationalist, which you know um, nowadays everyone in the corporate media and everyone wants to um, make national nationalism uh, such a dirty word when really at the end of the day though we may not agree with a lot of the things that Trump or uh, Le-, Le Pen want to push for these these quote-unquote nationalist ideas a lot of them the far left uh, can agree on you know um, getting 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 out of other countries stop nation building um, stop the globalization and being able to create slave labor and then destroy countries jobs there's a lot of things that the far left and the far right totally agree on and so that's why I think it's it's kind of interesting um, that how it's all falling into place so now you have Macron who this is who it's going to be the two final runners and Macron he was with the socialist party basically he was uh, Francois Hollande's uh, he worked in his administration who is that's the current president of France and he he was actually a, an investment banker um, before he he was a polit or he was a politician and then he actually bought out of his um of his contract for 50,000 euros to buy himself out his government contract. And this was in 2008. And then he left his work to go be an investment baker at a um, Rothschild and C bank, uh, bank we, I don't, <laughs> but um, so he's basically an investment banker. He's very pro EU. He's pro um, globalization, you know? So basically, okay. So you have, him who's just uh, and he's running as an independent so because the socialist party has a horrible horrible approval rating which makes sense because you have francois Hollande, who he was the previous president he got in to the um becoming president there on the socialist party and then right when he got in he started pushing austerity and it's like what like it makes no sense so that's why there's he he didn't run again because there's no way he would win but uh, and so you have Macron, he's basically running as an independent to kind of get away uh, from him. And obviously it won because he's he uh, is going to win this by about two percent points more than uh, Marie Le Pen. OK, so now we have the two final front runners. What happens now? These two in two weeks, they go and there'll be another election um, between Marie Le Pen and Macron. So um, 
I think it's awesome how it's only in two weeks. But then again, there's no debate in between that time. So I, I'm like, man, uh, compared to American primary election, it totally makes sense why a lot of the other countries look at us like we're crazy because we have, what, a whole year of prim- primary um, elections throughout all of America. And they just did it one night. And then two weeks later, they're going to have the actual presidential election. So so you have um, the far right nationalist Marie Le Pen, and then you have the Macron, the the basically the establishment. So it's almost like you have Macron is kind of like the Hillary Clinton over there, and then you have um, Marie Le Pen, who's kind of like the Donald Trump figure, the uh, the anti uh, establishment who wants to change things. So, and the problem is that the old. Uh, construction of the old liberal party is completely falling apart and you, you saw this in Bre- uh, Britain in Bre- with Brexit in, in England and then you also saw it here obviously in America with the Rust Belt states um, leaving the Democratic Party or in voting for Trump uh, because what's happening is the liberal or socialist parties on all three of these countries and pretty much it seems everywhere I look all across the you know uh, western uh, democratized world is it's falling apart the liberal coalition because you have the hollowing out of the working class and then the the liberal or socialist elite of the party the elite of the party they're not taking care of the working class they're they're only taking care of the rich rich bourgeoisie like liberals uh who are living in the cities running up rent prices and selling you know going and gentrifying the stupid the the communities um and then you you have the other part the far the very very poor who have no other option they can't vote for the right because they literally depend on whatever assistance programs um they're living on but the whole middle the working classes they're leaving they're they're leaving the party in droves because they're not being protected by the wall street investment bankers <laughs> they're not, you know you have that's why you have macron who he's basically the personification of everything that created marie le pen and you have the establishment running around saying oh marie le pen so horrible oh man she's like the next hitler or oh trump's so horrible oh brexit's gonna destroy the the economy it's gonna crash the world the world economy and everything's going to be horrible. And then after these things happen, after Trump wins or Brexit is voted into, the economy doesn't collapse. The end of the world doesn't happen. Um, I mean, maybe it's not as, you know, it's not rainbow sunshine, but it's not as bad as the media portrays it, which is kind of interesting because the media obviously they want this uh hillary clinton neoliberal uh now we have emmanuel macron over in uh paris we have this um you know this globalization idea and that globalization is destroying the middle class here in the western world and by destroying the middle class you have this right swing to these nationalist um uh characters like trump and le pen you know and boris johnson (laughs) over in uh, uh in the uk so so we're by putting these these neoliberal fake socialist who like Francois Hollande who goes in there and then he does austerity it's like well I mean they might as well just had Nicolas Sarkozy staying in there and because you when you have the left and this is why Hillary lost and this is also this probably I see I don't know if Macron's gonna lose um but it's gonna be close and if Macron doesn't lose if he wins then they're just gonna get Marie Le Pen again or they'll have another more far right candidate come about because like i said macron hillary clinton barack obama um david cameron all these politicians are pushing forth this agenda and pushing forth these policies that are creating this economic tidal wave and this economic tsunami and hurricane that's just destroying the middle class and then the middle class is revolting by voting for the populist candidates and the establishment the media and the elites 
uh, the bourgeoisie elites in their city high-rise million-dollar penthouse, they don't understand. They're, well, we're, we're going to Whole Foods and, oh, we raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour, but they don't understand because they're doing austerity. They're cutting back um, health care. And they, they're, they're citing, every time they never cite with the working class, they always cite with uh, Silicon Valley, Wall Street, they, the, or the military industrial complex. They don't cite with the middle class anymore. That's done. They're, they're, they're over it. They don't need the votes of the middle class, they're sort of so they think. So it's going to be really interesting in two weeks to see how this turns out. But my prediction here, and I predict, I I. I wish I had the the podcast um, back before, but I predicted um, that uh, Brexit was going to happen and I was going to vote, and I predicted that Trump was going to win. And I think that Marie Le Pen, I think she just might win because after that recent terror terror attack in Paris, uh, I think that is that help that, that helped her and then i think if any more terrorist attack god forbid or anything happens um it's only gonna help and bolster her numbers um and then also i i just i don't see more of this neoliberal corporatism um taking hold and it's just that's how i see it but like i said if macron does win we're only going to embolden the beast and then we'll get someone worse than Marie Le Pen. So what's the solution? The solution is we need real socialists with a spine. People on the left who actually say what they mean and mean what they say. They stand up for the working class and they actually want to help the people and not help the rich, the uber rich and the corporations in Silicon Valley. That's what we need in the left all in every country it seems because the left has sold its soul and they're basically no better than the right and that's why the right is winning because at least the right they say crazy shit and they mean crazy shit and well when you say what you mean you're gonna win so wake up left because i don't know how much more we can take of this uh far right movement it's starting to get kind of scary but we'll be here documenting it all and um thanks for joining us here at the punk rock and politics podcast and this open mic night is going a little over so we'll catch you later see ya peace Thanks for checking out Punk Rock and Politics. If you enjoyed the show and the information brought to you, please subscribe and share the podcast. It helps us here at Punk Rock and Politics, but more importantly, it helps the featured bands gain exposure. Also, if you know any bands or musicians who would like to join the political mosh pit and have their music featured on the Punk Rock and Politics podcast, please email us at punkrockandpolitics at gmail.com. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. And rock on, political junkies. I think our old our society is run by insane people for insane object, mm-hmm. objectives. Doing a better job of talking to each other. The left hand now knows what the right hand is doing. Look at those hands. Are they small hands? <laughs> and he referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. I guarantee it. Fucking thing sucks.